Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media. Just doing a little bit of a different video today where we're kind of digging into the, I guess, comic book cave of Critical. Just bringing out this buried treasure here. Tis the season after all. Uh, this here is Alberto Breccia's Dracula. This is a book that kind of released back in 2021, although it is an older story from like 1983. It's all Breccia. There's no art artist author combo it's really just the artist conveying the story and what we usually do at this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild so we go over the exterior some bonus material art and plot points and then a brief review at the end now as mentioned a bit of a unique take that's for sure but just walking around the exterior you know we'll see some typical fare so yes just a striking image from breccia there a traditional spine, at least nothing crazy going on there, but still, I appreciate the little logo. And, you know, your typical fare on the, the exterior. This is a Fantagraphics release, and don't worry, the book is pretty easy to find, so don't worry about having to find it and pay an arm and a leg. Now, for bonus material, this is actually the surprising part of the book. There's actually quite a bit of it. Um, I mean, it is a lot of sketchwork, and Brescia is like one of the god mc so to speak among this uh, style of art uh he's known for his like chiaroscuro style you know, so you'll usually see like um you know more light and dark with him but anywho yeah you're just getting a lot of just sketch designs again one of my favorite images of the book ironically followed up by another one of my favorite images from this book it's just really striking art um but probably Another aspect of this book that's surprising are the interviews. Very well in depth, very on point. I appreciate that they actually revived this interview and translated it, so big ups to the Fantagraphics in that regard. And there's the man, the myth, the legend himself. Uh, that's one thing I appreciate about uh, Fantagraphics. They really care about curating lists of books and making sure they do a fine job of releasing it. You know, because I would say they have a more of a, what's the word? They have a better ear for, or should I say, a better taste in, I guess, stories. But nonetheless, at least in terms of art and plot points, this book, it's not so much a one singular narrative. It's more of like the, made up of these smaller stories. And you don't, it's not like one narrative that carries forward. It's really just these contained stories. And also, it's kind of a, the satirical black comedy on the concept of Dracula. So you don't take it, take it too serious. You more so... Just kind of take the, the story as it's being conveyed and enjoy each one. Because some of them have very in-depth metaphor. Some of them have in striking art. Actually, all of them do. But still, it's just a unique uh, book altogether. But yeah, just uh, this particular yeah, story here. I like how you get an idea of the kind of, I guess, introduction to this kind of world it is. Where it's it t doesn't take itself too seriously. Serious enough, though. So yeah, there's just a carnival in town. You'll see that Dracula is in every image almost. That's pretty awesome. It's almost like a Where's Waldo almost. But uh, what I find awesome about Breccia here, and by the way, this is more of his avant-garde work. You'll usually find more structured work in his other books. Um, but nonetheless, like you'll see how even through the dysmorphic kind of conveyance of the story, you can still follow it. Like You can notice that he's now kind of focuses his attentions on this woman. And she keeps showing up and he's constantly after her. So I love that aspect. I love the menacing approach almost in every story. And a surprising angle to it. That's basically the man you know it is. Everything signs the S basically. Um, but he's more of a metaphor in this case. I love it. But I also love how this particular story, it really just prepares you for the rest of it. And how you will almost end up Realizing it'll make you smile at the end of every issue or every story because it kind of breaks cliches even it's This one was a really good opener. Let's just put it that way I almost want to turn the page, but you know, maybe if you're ever gonna enjoy this book on your own Not doesn't hurt to give it a good try But yeah, even these just straight-up hilarious ones where what is what does uh, Dracula do when he has to go to the dentist? You know his fangs hurt too, you know so I like how they almost try to create this sympathetic appeal for him. But even the still, the town still fears him menacingly, right? But I just love the, the mere idea of Dracula having to go to the dentist. It's just so unique. 
but uh, this particular page here. Now I highlight this one because this one pretty much nails exactly the art aesthetic that Brescia was going for. Because, as mentioned, he typically does chiaroscuro, meaning he does a lot of light and dark art. But in the past, or in other titles, he usually literally does white and black. He doesn't really do color. So this is one of those few times where he actually manages to use color, paint style actually, to actually convey that. And he manages to nail it so well, even in, on this intentional dysmorphic art style. He draws more conventionally, believe me. That's why this book is so unique, because this is much more of his avant-garde style. You know, even Frank Miller has his own different style compared to his conventional style. But nonetheless, uh, you'll see what I mean with the paint depth. He can create a 3D image, or even still, he can kind of create this sense of atmosphere and perfect environment for you to enjoy the story. It's, yeah, man, it's a master at work. It really is. And speaking of which, probably my single favorite page of this entire book, or should I say this layout, He's just going to town. He looks upon the village. I just love how striking the use of light dark is here. And how this image is so damn imposing. Like, I've legit looked up at the moon and wondered, you know, if I see a cloud go by, is it him? Just the way he floats through. It's so convincing how he went about conveying this. Like, super awesome story. At least that particular singular one. And oh baby, I was legend. Possibly the best story in this entire book. So, at least in terms of um, knowing your history for, or should I say, preparing you for this book. Brescia himself is Argentinian. This book was written in the early 80s. Argentina was going through a major upheaval. You know, several military dictatorships and whatnot. You know, they only got their independence proper not too long ago. Well, I guess in the past, like, few decades. But still... It's amazing how, like, even Dracula himself, this paranormal beast of, you know, horror, is afraid of humanity. Because he sees how crazy we can be to ourselves and how violent we could be amongst ourselves. As I mentioned, he's still in almost every image. He's bearing witness to how psychotic we are. Even he has to run away. Loved that concept. So brilliant that they even went with that. But um, another at least aspect to it, following with the same story. He also sees from all the horrors, he also sees like what humanity has to deal with. You know, how we still carry on. How his food, so to speak, manages to still survive, even with all these constant regime changes. Very impressive. That, yeah, Brescia was able to just easily do it. Like, man. Sim it seems simple, it may seem a little odd and a little bit crude in its art, but it's intentional. Like, it's such a... Yeah, it's just in such a great way to convey this kind of story. Um, but anyway, who? Oh, yes. Probably a unique one. I'm a fan of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, and this is a nice little homage to him. I appreciate that, yeah. As, uh, yeah, it's kind of a quote the Raven kind of aspect. But I like how even as, um, if you know your history about Edgar Allan Poe, how he was kind of a lush. I like how even when Dracula tries to go after him, yeah, I guess by having his blood, it's kind of a, Reminder that maybe you should be careful who you go after because you don't know what they have to. But this is such a unique story. Like it's, or should I say, a nice little collection. It's so damn evocative and so damn, what's the word? It's just unique to say the least. That you don't really come across books where it's intentionally trying to be crude, yet it has such a great way of conveying itself nonetheless. It's, you know, it hits the right note. But nonetheless, very unique tale. Uh, not too long. It's basically just under, I think, about 60 pages. But thankfully, the book isn't too expensive, and it's common enough. But nonetheless, I just wanted to share this one with you. After all, tis the season. And hopefully, you guys have a safe one yourselves. But anywho, hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next video. Nonetheless, y'all folks take care.